Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, shalom, chabarim. Now ones are beginning to debate this, that the Holy Spirit is feminine, is feminine. Some are going to Aramaic and Seretic. Some are trying to link, well, the Spirit and the Holy Spirit, as we find in the scriptures, coming from the Hebrew sense, they're trying to link it with Katesh. You might know who Katesh is. Katesh was a Canaanite god, goddess, should I say. Right, this is a her Canaanite form, right? That was incorporated coming from the east. Now we you spoke about how from the east, speaking about like Mesopotamia and Sumer, enough influence basically came down into Egypt. But they're trying to say that the Holy Spirit is linked with because it's is is Kadosh, right? We have Kadosh, we have Kodesh. But someone wanted to tell you what's well, actually feminine, feminine, right? Well, spirit is, in the Hebrew the sense, spirit has a feminine sense. Actually, it's neuter. Like, this is what's interesting. When we look at the languages that were written on the cross, right? The languages of the witness, right? What languages were written there? Now, the scripture shows us that the language that was written there was actually Hebrew, Greek and Latin. Let's bring that up. Let's bring that up. So here we go right here. We have Luke, Luca, Luke chapter 23, verse 38. And a superscription also was written over him. Speaking about Hamushiach, speaking about Yeshua, Hanotri, speaking about Robeno in letters, letters, right? Of what? Of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. It didn't say Greek, Latin, and Aramaic. You didn't say Greek, Latin, and Syriac or Seretic. It said Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. All right. Now, also over here, we have this right here. It says John 1920. What a year, 1920. All right. And here we're in the 2023, going to 2024. 20, 100 years ago, we have the 20s, the roaring 20s. Very significant in revelation and prophecy for the ones lost now found black and brown sheep or beta Israel. But pick up on that. This title then read many of the Yehudim, that in the English they say the Jews, the Judeans, for the place where Jesus or Jesus or Yeshua was crucified was nigh, that's, that's to say near, to the city. And it was written in what? Now here in Yohanan, Yohanan, notice John of the Gospel of John, John, that beloved disciple, the one that was revealed, the Chazon, Chazon, or the vision that they call in translation, the Revelation, Apocalypse, Uncovering. Well, let's uncover this. Here, he writes and says that it was in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. I remember that Luke is said to be, Luke is said to be a Greek um, physician. Now, when we say Greek, he could be a Hellenist, you know, in the sense of like a Hebrew. Some say he might have been a Hebrew that was raised in, we say, Greek, you know, the Greek culture. Like many of us, we say we're Hebrews, we're Israelites, but we've been raised in an Anglo, an Anglo-European, Anglo-American culture. Notice, coming from Luca's perspective, he has Greek first. You notice that? He has Greek first. Coming from Johannan, John, that beloved disciple, disciple that witnessed that said he was there, that was given the chazon, right? That revelation. He has Hebrew first, then Greek and Latin, right? Hebrew first and Greek and Latin. We point to this because these are the witnesses that we need to go to, the primary witnesses, right? Concerning Yeshua, both from the Brit Hayashana, the old covenant was called the Old Testament, to the Brit Hadasha, to the new covenant. Now, let's point this out that there's many words, names, and titles, and there is that masculine and the feminine aspect from Yahuwah, from the Almighty, from He. From he who be who he be, ha kadosh baruchu baruch Hashem. We do have many instances of the feminine aspect, the the balance of the masculine and feminine aspect. I was listening to a reasoning 
uh, I guess it was a reasoning or discussion with one person called himself Jehovah. He says he's the Holy Spirit. That's a whole other matter right there. And with Napashada. Now, she did bring out some interesting points concerning how in the Hebrew spirit is feminine. Spirit is feminine. Let's go right here, here, here. Spirit is feminine, right? When we go right here, let's clear that for a moment. And let's go to spirit. And this is some aspect that the KJV and lack of study, you know, has some of our people a little bit, a, a little bit, you think? I think a lot confused. In Bereshith, Bereshith, we already point out that Reshith is Chokmah and Chokmah is wisdom, right? This wisdom is, we could say, feminine. In a Hebraic sense, we could say it truly is a, the divine feminine from the old covenant, the Hebrew scriptures, straight to the new. Yes, wisdom is she. And Shlomo Hamelek Solomon brings it out in Proverbs perfectly, both in the English. The English brings out that it is she, right? As well as the Hebrew. So when we say Bereshith, the proper is in wisdom, Elohim, right? He, the powers, created the heavens and the earth. But here in Genesis, Genesis chapter one, verse two, it says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the ruach of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. So we, let's look at Elohim first. Elohim. Elohim here, in this sense, we have it as a noun masculine. Most ones that say that Elohim can be male or female, they don't even know the Hebrew. What's the Hebrew? What's the Hebrew for a feminine? We could say Elohim. It's not Elohim. Elohim is noun masculine. Just going to the basics of the Hebrew. Since you can see ones like Nepal Shaddai and others are getting more into linguistics. We see a lot of ones in the black consciousness, Bible debating community getting more into the Hebrew. It's good. But ones were asked, can you read it? We can read it. Right? We can read it. Hallelujah. But here, 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 it's a noun masculine. Just highlight that right there so you can see it's a noun masculine. It's not saying the gods and goddesses. No, because Bereshith in Chokmah, in wisdom, he, the powers, Elohim, powers created the heavens and the earth. But here, in the very next verse, it says, and the spirit. Now, spirit is Ruach, the H7309. Now, Ruach. Wind, breath, mind, spirit, right? Let's go down here. Let's go down here. Here's some of the aspects. You can study that to see how it appears in the scripture. Here we have the spirit of Elohim, right? It says the third person is giving a description of spirit as spirit is found. Now, some confuse the fact that it has spirit, seven spirits, and Holy Spirit. Spirit and Holy Spirit is distinct. Spirit may be and is, according to linguistics, feminine, but Holy Spirit, right, as it appears in the scriptures, is masculine. Because holy, unlike when the Pashada says she was like Kadash, the Kadash, and then she was linking that with Ketesh, Ketesh from ancient Egypt, or well actually from ancient Canaan, Canaan, the Canaanites. This is what the Canaanites were doing. Now we can understand what and why Yahuwah was so wrathful right, on the Canaanites. And why he said, don't do after what the Canaanites did. This was somehow bringing in in their pseudo um, intellectualism. But it's a good reasoning, ain't it? Spirit of God, right? Just wear spirit, ruach. It didn't say the Holy Spirit of God. It says the Spirit, Ruach. Here we have the third person, right, of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, said to be co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and Son. Let's scroll down here. Now, notice right here, Spirit is defined, Spirit, wind, breath. Spirit is defined as feminine. That's correct. So Spirit is feminine, but Holy Spirit is is masculine. So I'm not going to understand this at first. We're going to have to go through some examples here. So when it says spirit of God moved, let's go to the Hebrew right here, right? Let's go to the Hebrew. 
People want to up it. They said up the game, so to speak. This is no game. This is serious. Right? Because it says blasphemy of the Holy Spirit would not be forgiven. Hmm. Trying to say that Katesh is the root of the Hebrew Kadash is just totally foolish. Katesh as a noun is something that the Canaanites got from the Semitic, the Shemitic, and the Egyptians incorporated in their belief system. Basically, a minor god that some say was associated with Het, Hetchor, Hetchor, Hetcheru, right? That's a whole other reason. Right here it says, with Haaret, Vaharet, Haita, Tohu, Wabohu. We choshek al pneya tehom. We ruach Elohim. There we go right there. We am the ruach of Elohim. We ruach Elohim me rachefet. Now we know it's feminine here in this sense because of this word me rachefet. The te, right at the end me rachefet. Right? Hovered. Almost like a mother dove. Here we can get many ancient symbologies from it. Merachefet we ruach Elohim merachefet al pnei hamayim. Let's go down here to the merachefet. Here's the merachefet from rachaf. Merachefet from the root word. See, most of them they go to these sources, but I don't know how to really read the sources because here we have a verb. But the verb here merachefet. The t, the tav at the end, is bringing out the verb in a feminine sense. See, it's saying kadash, kadash is actually a verb. And the verb can apply to masculine and to feminine. You see, the Hebrew linguistic science, they don't have the science of this. You got to study to show yourself approved. They appointed some interesting references from scholars and maybe some pseudo scholars, but as far as themselves, they only are depending on what somebody else has researched because they're making some awful errors. Kata, kadash, not the katesh. Katesh is just a borrowed word from Shemitic. In other words, kadash, as in ruach kadash or kadesh, the root is Hebrew. So the verb is before the noun. Some people find a noun over here and they say, well, Katesh is the root of that. Katesh is not the root of the Hebrew word for holy or set apart. So here this word is like to brood, right? The spirit brooded, right? Here some say this is the gap theory, the gap here in verse 2 because Yahweh Loheinu did not create the earth to be void and without form. He did not create it in vain, in other words, but to be inhabited. So here we have the Ruach. Here we have the sense of Elohim. He, the powers, here is that maternal aspect. So it's true. There is a balance, right? There is that balance, so to speak. In other words, there is the, let us make man in our image of our likeness. So yes, that feminine aspect is in he who be who he be because he is the, the Lord of the spirits. See, there are spirits. Now, spirit, based on the Hebrew, is feminine. Well, let me ask you a question. To breathe, right? The breath is also feminine. But to breathe, don't males as well as females breathe? Yes, they breathe. Right? So when a male breathes, does that make the male feminine? When the female breathes, right, it doesn't make her masculine because the word breathing, right, at its root, right, is a verb, right? So males and females. But here, the context of this here is very clear that we're speaking about feminine, right? The feminine aspect of Elohim. Like it says, mothers may forget, Right, the, the children, but he says he will not forget. Let's just go here to Holy Spirit. Not going to be long on this because we want to get more into this, but we heard some things that we just had to kind of voice out on. Right? So, right here, the word spirit. Now, when it says everyone in whom his spirit, right, if spirit is feminine, right, here we go to Ruach, 
if spirit is feminine, all right, let's bring this out. If spirit is feminine, right down here, part of speech, it's a noun feminine. You see, and let's get to the root. The root of that is ruach. See, I know I just said ruach before. I'm saying ruach again because they really don't know Hebrew. They don't know understand the linguistic science. They'll think I'm just saying the same thing, right? Because it might sound similar. No, here we're getting to the root, ruach, right? The sense of to smell, to smell a sense, to perceive an odor, a ruach, right? Right? To the lighten, a ruach. Notice right here, it's a verb, right? So that means males can do this verb as well as females can do this verb, even though the noun, a ruach, is feminine. That doesn't make a man female when he, when he breathes something. You see what I'm saying? A primitive root probably to blow, to breathe. Basically, the Hebrew sense is to smell. Right? When it says Yahweh Loheinu will smell, does this make Yahweh, Yahweh, does this make him feminine here? Yahweh, Yahweh? No, it doesn't make him feminine because he, what? He breathes. He is still he who be who he be who breathe. He breathed the sweet smell of the Aishans being offered to him. We have examples of that. Just pointing that out to those of quick understanding, you know, that quick understanding. But here, 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 let's go to... Now, this is the interesting psalm right here, all right? This is the interesting psalm. David didn't say, don't cast your spirit, because there's the seven spirits. He is Lord of the spirits, all right? We can show you where it says he sent an evil spirit, right? An evil spirit was sent from Yahuwah, because it says spirit, and it says Holy Spirit. It says an evil spirit, because he's the Lord of the spirits, Right, Lord of the Spirits. Let's pause on that right here and let's go to this right here with Lord of the Spirits. I should have kept Spirit there, right? But He is Lord of the Spirits. That means that there is more than one. You follow where I'm, I'm going with this, right? More than Yahweh says, My Spirit. Spirit is feminine, but He's saying, Yahweh saying, My Spirit. Right. Let's bring the verse out where it says that he is Lord of the spirits. Right. He is Lord of the spirits. Right. Slicha, uh, slicha, God of the spirits. It says, let me Yahweh, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. You get the verse right there. Numbers chapter 27, verse 16. Let's go down here to the, we'll go to the Tanakh Hebrew. Why right, it says Yifkod, Yifkod, Yifkod Yahuwah Elohe Ha Ruchot Ha Ruchot He is Elohe the Elohim of Ha the Ruchot. They are Ruchot as is Ruach. Here we have Ruchot. Lakol Basar of all flesh, whether the flesh is male or female. Ish Right, al ha eda ish a man all upon ha the eda congregation. So you've called, you've called here from pagad, pagad to tend to muster. Right, the sense being used right here is to appoint. In this sense of the word right here, to set the he felt we have to set over to make overseers, bringing out that sense to set over the congregation. Right, set over the charge. If called Yahweh, Elohe Haruchot. So he is saying that he is Elohe, right, of the Ruchot, of the what? Of the spirits. Right, plural spirits. Ruchot of all flesh. The called Basar of all flesh, whether the flesh is male or female. So there's more than one kind of spirit. Check. There's more than one kind of spirit. They want to confuse you. They want to read a verse that says Holy Spirit and then read a verse over here that says Spirit. Then they want to tell you that Holy Kadash is feminine because they worship Katesh or they all into Egypt and talk about Katesh and say, well, Katesh is, is, is a goddess. So, so Holy comes from the goddess. And then they want to imply that Holy Spirit, therefore, is referring to some goddess 
of the people that Yahuwah commanded his people not to follow behind. What sense make that make sense? This is what David said in Psalm 51, 11, cast me not away from that presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. It's very interesting because here is where Dawit proves that he's a man after Yahuwah's own heart. How many times do you find Holy Spirit? And it's interesting because even in the Hebrew brings out more the force of the sense. It not say Kadasha. It's not the Kadasha, only in the Aramaic. It didn't say that it was Hebrew, Aramaic. It didn't say it was Aramaic, Greek, and Latin. We're going to the Hebrew. Al Tashlecheni, Mil Milfaneka. Right? Don't cast me away, Milfaneka, from thy presence, thy face, Milfanecha, Milfaneka, Al Tashlecheni, Milfaneka, Wirwacha Adsheka. The what? And the Ruach, the spirit, remember that spirit is feminine, right? We, we agree, spirit is feminine, right? In its basic sense, actually it's neuter. But mostly the examples we have is feminine. Majority of the examples is feminine. It's really neuter, but the linguists will say based on the majority of places, it's feminine. So we say, all right, it's feminine. But here it has Kad Sheka. Kadesheka, 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 right here. Kodesh. Uh oh, Kodesh is masculine. Uh oh, Kodesh is masculine. Mm. So spirit is feminine, right? Basic. But Kadesh and Kodesh is what? Kodesh is, huh? Kodesh is masculine. Kodesh is masculine in the Ivrit. Ivrit. We're not talking about Aram, the Aramaic. Right? That's a related language, but this is the language here. We'll get into some nuances of that. But Kodesh, right? Holy Spirit is masculine because holy. See the distinction is he's trying to say spirit is spirit is spirit is spirit. Is spirit is spirit. The scriptures show that they are the, the sevenfold spirit, right? The sevenfold spirit, sevenfold spirit. So there's seven kinds of spirits, spirits of all flesh in a general sense, yes? But specifically, Dawit says something very interesting here when he says, when he says right here, We're Ruach Kadesheka al Tikach, al Tikach, al Tikach. Don't take al tikach, right? Mi meni, mi meni, mi meni from me. So here, Dawit in Psalm 51, verse 11, he proves that the Holy Spirit, right, is masculine because holy in this Hebrew context, right? Kadash, the Kadash, it says Kadash, Kadash, Kadash is Yahuwah, is he who be, who he be, holy, masculine, holy, masculine, holy, masculine. Now, is there a feminine aspect there? Yes, his soul. Yahuwah speaks about his soul, is she? Yes, we just proved that the Ruach Elohim is she. But here is a specific context. So they confuse spirit with Holy Spirit. Don't confuse spirit with Holy Spirit. Dawi, the man after Yahweh's own heart, right? Nadib, notice what it says Nadib. Nadib just means to be generous, right? But here we have spirit here, Ruach, right? In the next verse, restore to me the joy of thy salvation, the joy of thy Yesha, Yesha, Yesha. What is Yesha? Right, Yesha, as we have Yeshua, right, Yeshua, Yesha is masculine, right, of thy Yesha, to say of thy Yeshua. Remember Dawid, Hamelech, a man after Yahweh, Yahweh, his own heart. And uphold me with thy free, Nadib, Ruach. Notice, that free spirit, we can say, well, notice, there's the Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit. Then there is the free spirit. The with thy is not the in the Hebrew. Just want to point this out to the brothers and sisters that the with thy 
Let's go back over here quickly right here. With thy is not right in the Hebrew. Let's go to this verse right here. Let's bring out this verse quickly right here, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, right here. Let's go down to Tanakh. Right, we have right here. Hashiba, Hashiva, Hashiba, return Lee. Right, what we have, restore, return. Right, they, from the shoe to turn back, restore. Hashiva Lee. Right, Sason. Right, Sison, Sison. Right, Hashiva Lee, Sison. The joy, Sison. Yisheka, Yisheka. Here we have a, a pre a foreshadowing of Yeshua, right? Yesha, Yesha. You see Yesha, deliverance, rescue. You see Yesha, part of speech is a noun. Yesha, Yesha, Yesha is a noun masculine. Check. We're Ruach Nadiva. We're Ruach Nadiva. And the, and the spirit. Now here we have feminine. So here it shows a feminine spirit, right? Or the f spirit in the feminine sense, but the unique sense of the Holy Spirit is he, right? We ruach nadiba, tisa mecheni, tis mecheni, and uphold me, tis mecheni, and uphold I, tis mecheni, from Samak, support I, uphold I, with a willing spirit, now, this is feminine here, Ruach Nadiva. But then we have in the verse before, what do we have in the verse before? Let's bring it down here. We have, We Ruach Kadsheka. Kadsheka. Now, we showed you both. Let's show people once again. Let's go to Ruach. Ruach as a basic noun. Right, ruach, and all the forms of this word spirit applies in the Hebrew is a noun feminine. However, kadash or kodesh, right? Kadash is how it's pointed. Kadash, kodesh is a what? Noun masculine. Now, when we go to the root, the H 6942, kadash, what's kadash? Kadash is a verb. They don't know Hebrew. They don't understand this. We can have the word kadash as a noun, right? Feminine. There is kad, uh, we say we say ruach. Why right? we say um, the brit chadasha. Brit is feminine. Chadasha. So the new covenant has a feminine sense. So we're not going against the feminine here, but we're giving ones much needed the Hebrew science before they go around blaspheming the Holy Spirit, right? So right here, to pronounce, observe. But the verb, right, the verb is the verb. The verb is not masculine. The verb is not feminine. The verb can be masculine or feminine. depends on its context. But the specific context of the Holy Spirit predicates in the Hebrew, the saying that was written as a witness, right, of Yeshua HaNotri, is masculine. We just showed you that right here. Noun, masculine. What's a noun masculine? Masculine. It's the Kodesh. Kodesh. Ruaha Kodesh. Noun, masculine. So what we have here, it qualifies this spirit as his spirit. And also in the manifestation as that we have in um, John. We could go there too. Right, but we say we're going to be brief with this because we know a lot of ones going to want to, you know, try to hit this up. You know what I mean? What it says about the comforter. Let's go right there. The comforter, right? The comforter, right? Comfort, right? Let's go right there. Comfort, right? The comforter, right? Let's bring that up. Let's clear that. Comforter. Does bring us all the way to the New Testament? Yes, it does. We put as comforter, right? Um, comforter. For a moment, I was like comforter or comfortor. Let's go to this verse right here. John 14, 26. For the Holy Spirit, right? The Ruach, huh? Kadesh, Kadash, whom the Father will send in my name, he 
brings down the Hebrew, even brings down the Koine Greek as a witness. He shall teach you. And in the true ancient Latin, it would bring that out. All things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. Some say comforter is not there because they're looking at the Greek parakletos. We don't have parakletos, right, in the, you know, Hebrew sense, right? The real sense right here will be the Menachem. But that comes in because that's the language that we spoke here. We have Ruach HaKodesh, right? Ruach HaKodesh. And when we look at the verbs right here, it says Asher Yishlach, right? That he will send Abi, the Father, Bishmi, Bishmi, in my name. You see right there, it says who, he, right? And the verb, right? Ye lamed dekem, and he will, ye lamed dekem, he will teach you at the call, right? We yaz, yaz kir, and cause like you to remember. Here, this verb here is masculine too. So it tells us that the comforter in the Greek, parakletos, the menachem, the comforter is the ruach kadosh. Rakadash. And notice the link with David, how David says this as well. Notice the fact that they want to tell you that holy is feminine in Hebrew. No, 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 no. There's a way to say something that is feminine is holy, like the new covenant, right? The Brit Hadasha. But it doesn't say Hadasha. It says very clearly, Kodesh, not Kodesha, not Kadasha, but Ruach Kodesh. So, picking up right here where we started out, because there's more to say about this, right? This is not true. It is true that spirit is feminine, but the Holy Spirit, Hebraically, is masculine. That's the truth. Ruth.